yesterday you were kind of uh, facing issues with protect like what could have been for all we know early onset hypothermia yeah. uh you're super cold even during the day yeah. uh, when it was sunny when you're out in the sun yeah. uh you'd have these cold waves come over you yeah. uh how do you feel differently today it's a new day i'm feeling more positive today actually um you know last night um didn't rain as much uh, wearing a black bag to sort of trap in some body heat that helped massively um, so that might have to if it gets too cold might have to be a thing thing that I start using um, and you know um, I had a decent night's sleep I wasn't in uh, you know puddles of water which was keeping me you know forever cold so obviously a water drops your yeah. temperature so quickly so you know I've woken up today and I'm actually feeling really positive like you know completely flip of a coin from yesterday um, you know ready to crack on with the day you know and try and see the project to the end mate which I reckon with more lights, nights like that and you know with the precautions we're taking now I can I can do yeah sweet so uh, I guess uh, it's all worked out good the black bin bag yeah man and maybe you can uh, take it home for fashion isn't it yeah man take it maybe sell it in, in like next or River Island top man yeah, ASOS it, you gotta stay to ASOS See it more as a Primark kind of kind more of, of a Primark type of power. Yeah, man. I guess you're not vying for any kind of uh, sponsorship deals from Primark. I could, I could always draw like a little Adidas logo logo on there, and you know, sell it for like fifty quid. Yeah, or a Nike logo. Nah, more of a Adidas in it. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. The man. Cox War teeth. Nah, 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 nah. Why not? Because you know, sweatshops in it. All of them do sweatshops. Yeah, no. Every single one. Yeah, man. But yeah, no, what about you? How, how are you feeling today? Yeah, I feel fine. Just low energy as normal. Uh, body fat's dropping to so minimal levels now. In terms of, obviously I can lose more body fat, but once you get below like 11% body fat, that's when it starts to have real uh, issues with you having low energy. As your body doesn't want to burn that remaining fat, as it's really important to your body's function. Yeah. You ready to crack on and go fishing today? Yeah, let's give it a go. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling positive about it. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, so I'm on a bit of a uneven uh, surface right now. Well, it's just have to do. Yeah, so uh, this whole time I've been out here, I'm yet to have a bow movement. Uh, James is a two, I have a zero at the moment. It uh, kind of shows how little it's been at, which is pretty much zero. Uh, I've had some kind of insects, I ate a lizard, uh, I've had a cricket, I've had a few worms, a few uh, ants as well, uh, a few bugs, uh, and a few berries, but it's not really enough to kind of make a bowel movement, so I'm kind of concerned that I probably might go this whole journey without it. Uh, at the moment, uh, we're currently, I mean, you've got kind of two things in the world, we've got thriving or surviving. At the moment, we're just surviving, which isn't the best. Uh, that just means we're going, we're eating hand to mouth, uh, we're not getting enough calories in. Uh, this isn't too good. Hopefully, when we start fishing, hopefully, we catch enough fish to kind of change that. We're going to start to mow, uh, but we've kind of the rain, it's coming more unpredictable. So, it's now raining during the day as well, which is making it difficult to be outside as it kind of drops your body temperature and gets you wet. Uh, I'm only concerned. Uh, it has this whole experience. My idea was to do it with as, as few kind of survival tools as possible. Uh, I feel like uh, James might be taking the kind of easy way out at the moment, uh, using like a black bin bag uh, to you know stay warm at night. Uh, when we were travelling to the destination naked, uh, he put so he put so uh, his socks on, and he put my socks on as well, uh, and that I don't know. I feel like that's not too much survival. Uh, he could have fixed that issue with duct tape on his feet like I did, uh, but he chose not to. So yeah, I guess we kind of see uh, what pans out. Because uh, you want to have like a tough experience, you don't want to make it too easy on yourself. Uh, doing stuff like that makes it a bit too easy, but you know, each to their own. I guess we both have different ideas about this project, essentially. Uh, I want a more of a raw survival, I guess he would use any equipment to kind of do that. But I guess uh, we'll see how that pans. Uh, sleeping in shelters is a lot easier now. Uh, 
we've got plenty of leaves on there so that you know there are still drips coming through and it does still get wet but we're not getting soaked it's a lot nicer but uh, yeah I look forward to uh, getting home after some of my days we're about we've been in Malaysia for almost two weeks now uh, so another week and a, and a few days and we will we will we like we've been in Malaysia for an, about two weeks now so another week and a few days and we, we uh, will be uh, back home eating full meals which I'm very excited about but yeah uh, it's all going well the blackouts are getting worse uh, the way to describe how the blackouts work for me at least uh, is that it kind of visionettes it starts with visionetting and it kind of the blackness fades in until there's a tiny circle tiny circle tiny circle to see through and then that goes and it kind of goes away uh, but this t one of my latest ones uh, it actually hurt my head that's the first time I felt pain like actual real pain from a uh, blackout this doesn't bode too well but yeah uh, keep doing it my scar is not going to heal whilst I'm out here I've accepted with that. I'll have to see a doctor when I get back to England. Uh, but other than that, you know, I'm still doing fine. You know, the hunger doesn't affect me that much. Uh, it's the low energy that affects me. Like, I don't, as much as I want food, I'm not feeling like, oh, oh I need some food. Like you would in England. Or maybe that's because that food's so accessible in England that, like, when you don't have it, you're like, well, oh, it kind of hurts. I kind of need it. But out here, we know food's not really much of an option at the moment because we haven't seen that many. We haven't seen uh, many creatures, kind of like mammals or reptiles, to eat. To be honest, we haven't seen any. Well, I've had one lizard myself. James saw a large lizard the other day. I saw a monitor lizard uh, back at our first location. This is coming uh, almost two weeks ago. But yeah, keeping on well, doing fine. Low energy is bad. I'm getting a bit too skinny, which means that my body's having difficulty burning in my remaining fat because it is kind of trying to hold on to it because you know you do need fat to survive. Yeah, I think that's it for now. But yeah, no, I do think James, one of the key things that he's able to do is he's a great motivator. Having two people out here is a lot, I think it's probably a lot better than having one because uh, one person. Well, uh, kind of having two people means you're kind of more motivated. You've got someone else to kind of like keep each other motivated uh, and kind of keep each other strong. When you've got one person, you kind of by yourself, it's probably easier to give up. But yeah, two people helps you keep motivated and keeps you going quite hard. That's it. Also, yeah, I can tell how bad uh, this lack of nutrition, lack of food is affecting me. So that my knee injury, which I sustained in the first location, but falling part way down a uh, very, very short ravine, maybe eight feet, seven, eight feet, I'm not really sure. Uh, well, I didn't fall the whole way, but my, leg, my knee kind of caught, stayed on the surface. It's not healing. That would be like a three, four day maximum injury uh, in England when you're eating plenty of food. Out here, it's been two weeks and it's not doing much, much healing at all. Yeah, I think that's it for now. I'm gonna uh, let Jane speak to the camera soon. That's my knee. That is my knee. That is my knee. That is my knee hurting. Right now we're going to make ourselves, or try to make ourselves, try to make ourselves a improvised uh, fishing net using this. Uh, we know where the river is. Uh, we've been kind of delayed going back there for quite a few days now. It's maybe been what three days, James? Yep. Uh, because energy's been low. Uh, I'm kind of like also kind of hoping for my hand to heal a bit more because once water gets to it, it kind of starts the healing process all over again. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to crack on and see what we can make. At the moment, my energy levels are super low. I'm blacking out every t most times I'm standing up pretty much. Uh, my last blackout actually hurt for the first time. Find a claw and there's a mosquito on it. I've got four corners. I wanna try find my way up. In what looks like almost a straight line. There we go. So I'm gonna make one. Just fold it over to give it a bit more strength. Just 
you could be carrying a certain amount of water out the uh, river. And use this line. Do basic knots. It's on fisherman knots. Uh, I didn't know how to do fisherman knots at one point in the past, but you kind of forget. Can we just uh, go, can you go back to the? I'll do part of it again. I wasn't recording, unfortunately. Okay, so right now, yeah, it's going to be making a uh, imp improvised. Yeah, so right now, if we're going to be making a improvised uh, fishing net. Uh, from this mosquito net. I haven't been fishing before uh, in my life, so it's kind of part guesswork and part from a theory from what I've read online uh, on the old Wikipedia, I guess. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna crack on. Yeah, we haven't been able to go fishing in a while. Well, we've known where the river, the river is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. So yeah, uh, we haven't been able to go fishing in a while. We've known where the uh, river is, uh, but we've kind of been delayed by lack of energy. Uh, also, I've been kind of hoping for my wound to heal a bit more because uh, whenever it hits water, it kind of starts the healing process all over again and it's going to increase the chances of uh, infection. So, I was going to kind of use this fishing line to kind of like put it together. I'm not using a proper fishing knot, uh, I used to know how to do them, but uh, kind of that kind of goes out your mind whilst you're out here. Put a few in it. So, what I've done as well is kind of roll it up to make it a bit stronger. So that's got to be pulled out of the water essentially. Let's go into my uh, medical kit. Get myself some scissors. So we can cut it at the right length. I'm kind of guessing the length. Better to cut too long than to uh, cut too short. One corner done. Find another corner. There we go. You give it a fold. Just a decent amount. Just to give it a bit more strength when it comes out of water, as you will be pulling up a fair bit of water because these holes are quite uh, small. Take a while to drain out. There is no way to know. There's no way to know if this uh, fishing method will work or not. It's just pure trial and error. Have you ever been fishing, James? Yeah, once. So you are already never caught the, anything. You are you're already the most experienced fisher here. <laughs> so uh let's see what happens. I've not been this this type of fishing. When was the last time you went fishing? Um about a month before we came out here. You're an expert compared to me then. How long were you fishing out there for? Fun. How long were you fishing? About half a day. Half a day? Yeah. Are you out there fishing with? My brother? Nice. Okay, I'm going to cut this again, give it some length. Just have, to have another corner. There we go. Well, at least I think there's a corner. Don't use it anyway. Same. Action again. again. Oh, it's got bitten by another insect. Always a pleasure. What do you think our hopes, our chances of catching fish are, James? Um, it wasn't the kind of river where you could tell anything was living in there, so yeah. we are doing it a little bit blind. Um, 
we hope there's life in that river and like this forest um, yeah it's just trial and error yeah. man we're just gonna have to keep trying yeah you know yeah where there's will there's a way but unfortunately neither of us are called will no. so you're gonna have to just rely on faith but neither of us are called faith so what do we have um, we have a James and we have a Dan We've got beginner's luck uh, yeah, we need some of that to be fair. I'm hoping that is a real thing, beginner's luck. <laughs> so, yeah, this type of fishing, I think, will be called uh, Sien or Sen fishing. I'm not really sure, but you can uh, always edit out, uh, or just voice over what kind of talking <laughs> that comes kind of It's probably 100% incorrect. So, there you go. Think about it, if we uh, had Jesus along with us, we'd only need one uh, one fish. Yeah. There'd be a thousand of us. I don't think either of us packed him, so it's been very difficult. The more kind of pieces of, uh, of string we kind of tie, yeah, the more type of pieces of string we kind of tie here, uh, that's going to reduce the pressure on each part of this very obviously weak mosquito net. So kind of the more we do, the better. It makes it a bit more complex. Okay, I seem to have tied it to each to each other. Here, yeah, without using any piece of string. Oh well, just got to do that part again. There we go. And all the, all the uh, way around now. Uh, next is to tie the string together. Nice some bamboo. It's hard to do. We need to find a decent tree for now, temporarily. We've got some bamboo which is near to the river. Obviously, we won't use it, we won't kind of go get it until uh, it comes to the chance. So, for now, just leave it like that. Oh, it's hard to be to the Can we just pause for a bit? Yes, or what? Just getting really light headed. That's why you're pausing up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Should I stop the recording? Yeah, fine. Sorry, no? Sorry. Dude, you're coming to the king of light headedness. Huh? You're coming to the king of light headedness. You don't need to apologize. I'm just trying to capture as many shots as I can. Yeah. Stand on your feet for way too long, man. Like, no. it's time. Yeah. Just a bit more. So, yeah, we've just been hit by some uh, afternoon rain. Uh, so, he decided to come back in to uh, shelter. Uh, to keep all our gear dry, all our camera equipment dry, all our batteries dry uh, and we'll kind of have to, hopefully, if it does clear up, we'll be able to kind of continue uh, doing our planning for fishing tomorrow. Yeah, and you know, with the energy, the en little energy we have, we just kind of need to just stay warm yeah. because otherwise being cold that will exhaust, exhaust too much energy that we, too, too much energy that we don't really have at the moment. Mm. So. You know, the best thing for us is to just stay here until it all tides over, to be fair. Exactly. With, uh, obviously, any kind of cold weather, your body's got to work harder to stay warm. Obviously, we wouldn't be shivering outside, uh, but it still has to kind of work harder to be warm, and uh, you don't want to kind of exert that energy. But, yeah, obviously, we've, uh, we've kind of 
this weather's becoming more and more unpredictable. It's getting deep and deep into monsoon season, so it's kind of it, you at a start. Uh, it used to just rain, so we're uh, just at rain like for yeah about seven uh, into the evenings and overnight. But now it seems to be more and more often like raining uh, during the afternoon uh, as well. So it's kind of uh, keeping us out from actually doing anything active at the moment. And there's James, one hand, um, 25. Uh, you know, um, he's working ordinary job nine to five. Um, before I decided to come and do this with Dan. Um, I wanted to test my body really. One of the main one of the main motivations is I was getting bored with my current current situation. You know, I wanted to take take myself really so far out of my comfort zone, which this has done. Um, to then test myself to, you know, say, can I do it? Have I got the perseverance, have I got the, you know, drive, the ambition, you know, to survive. Um, yeah, and you know, you see this kind of stuff on TV, and you think, nah, I wouldn't be able to do that, I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do what they're doing, but you know, I, I think everyone in, naturally inside them has the survival instincts, and has the survival ability, it's just about, you know, un unlocking that, you know, honing in them skills, learning, you know, from each day, day to day, on you know, how you can do better, you know, what needs to be done differently, you know, and, and these are real skills that you can uh, you can take into the re real world um, once we finish this. And it, you know, it's about, I, I like to challenge myself, I, I like the feeling of, you know, pushing, pushing my body to sort of the absolute limit, and then when you've finished, you know, that sense of, accomplishment um, you know that's a, that's a bit of a drug to me you know that's why I like to set myself these sort of different challenges every now and again and they sort of seem to be getting bigger and bigger as I do these uh, so what were your other challenges you know like I've done like an ultra marathon um, you know I've done like three peaks challenge I've done sort of small sort of challenges that you know people you know people do but this seems to be the biggest one that's taken yeah, out of my comfort zone, you know, test my body to different different limits, you know, not only physically, mentally, you know, there's a lot of time out here that, you know, plays on your mind, um, but God only knows, like, what the next one's going to be, because how do you top this, you know, I suppose it's only going to get bigger, um, but then I would have taken everything that I've, you know, I was, I was a novice to this when I came out. You know, I would take everything that I've learned here into the next one and, you know, make that a success as well. What do you want to do next? I don't know. Like, you know, there's a few ideas floating around. Um, I'd like to do the, sort of, Dan was sort of, before he's spoken about like an island thing. And living on a deserted island. I wouldn't mind trying something like that. Um, you know, but for a bit longer of a period of time. Um, something where, you know, hunting can come into play. Um, maybe not something with uh, so much rain. Uh, so maybe a different part of the country. Either that or just um, test myself, like, physically. So, you know, I don't know, maybe a cycle challenge, something along those kind of lines. Um, a walking challenge. Um, I don't know, really. Um, I'd like to get this one over and done with first. To then, you know, think about that the next the next one. To be fair. So Dan, tell me tell me a bit about yourself and the motivations for why you're out here and what you're doing. Sure, yeah. Uh, well, I'm Daniel. Uh, we're kind of like a normal job in England. Uh, my motivation to be out here is kind of similar to the other challenges I've done in my life. I like to kind of uh, succeed and kind of like achieve certain things. Uh, so I've kind of I tried to walk across uh, Europe. I was a bit younger, I didn't really get all the way across, anywhere near all the way across. I kind of uh, was too ambitious in my plans. I got a decent way, so like it wasn't like a ma it wasn't a success in terms of like I got to where I wanted to be, but I learned all the things I wanted to learn. So it's more about the journey rather than the destination in that. Uh, like the other year, I cycled across the Sahara Desert. I did it very successfully. Uh, you know, I did the whole way through, 
got where I wanted to be, learn what I wanted to learn as well, and it kind of gives you direction in your life. Uh, I like to kind of set myself like achievable kind of targets. Sometimes the targets are actually almost unachievable, but I like to set myself targets to have something to work towards rather than just like the normal kind of house kind of situation, a certain job uh, that other people do have. Uh, one of the key motivations for like this certain project uh, is just I wanted to do something quite cool. Uh, I've been planning to kind of go to a desert island for the past, it could be about, it could be almost two years now, I can't remember how long, it's probably about 20 months potentially, uh, and that takes quite a long, long time to plan. So this is kind of something which is in the intermission at the moment, just to kind of uh, do before I go out there in the future hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to choose like a kind of a wet, kind of rainforest type environment. So that's kind of similar to a desert island. I've already been to the Sahara Desert. So, you know, this is a nice uh, other kind of variant, which is kind of meets in the middle. If you kind of combine the two, you kind of get yourself a desert island, essentially. So how are you finding this? Is this a struggle compared to the, the other two challenges you've done? Or Yeah, I'm finding the main thing about this, uh, originally in the first few days, the main problem was uh, having the amount of weight that you're carrying because, you know, with two people, we were like alone with just two people, and we've got all our camera gear, which is all on our back. You have to carry two bags at a time, full of chargers, batteries, uh, all of that. It's, it's quite difficult in that sense. Uh, but the main difficulty uh, at the moment is having the low energy. Uh, having my body fat go lower and lower, yeah, it becomes harder and harder uh, for the body to be able to kind of source energy uh, from the body rather than having any food but uh, yeah definitely the challenge is something which I'm very comfortable with uh, yeah I don't really come out here just to test myself I like to have that I like to have that sense of achievement and that go uh, testing myself isn't the main thing because like I know I can do certain things there's not like there's certain things like I know I can do uh, I know they put my mind to it, I can do it so I'm not coming out here to test myself but I'm coming out here to kind of achieve something very difficult so which is out of the norm, uh, like a lot of people, uh, you know, when people were kids, you know, people wanted to be, you know, astronauts or you know, foot like famous like world class footballers. But uh, you know, I know I'm not going to be any of those two. But what I can do is push myself as hard as I can, give like a hundred and twenty percent, and I can you know achieve different things with like kind of different like successes. And uh, it's a different achievement, and it's not something which a lot of people could do because uh, people aren't willing to do it. People want to have the ambition or the drive to do it, and it kind of uh, gives you a whole different life. Because obviously, in kind of the Western world, everything comes so easy to you. There's a you know, all the, like 24 hours, there's a shop like somewhere to kind of buy food. But uh, here, you kind of got a you kind of escape from it all. You kind of live a different life for a certain amount of days, and that's what kind of excites me. How different it is here compared to how I get home. But like my main, one of my main motivations nowadays, whilst I'm actually in this uh, rainforest, is to get that kind of satisfaction uh, and having that kind of that first meal when I get back to England. Mm -hmm. Like having a nice warm sausage roll. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's simple, but that's something which I look forward to. And I feel like before I have that sausage roll, I need to kind of achieve what I want to achieve out here before I feel like I truly deserve it. How do you feel like you're gonna adapt back into norm, normal sort of nine to five routine, having been out here for sort of 21 days. Um, do you think that's gonna be difficult or do you think, you know, will the urge to, you know, sort of get back out straight away? Yeah, I feel like definitely, uh, when you get back from kind of these adventures, like from the Sahara Desert, you get like a incredible high that you've kind of achieved something and everybody is uh, trying to find out exactly what, what you did and that kind of stuff. But uh, getting back into the nine to five will be quite easy. Uh, because it will mean that I can just buy loads of food. <laughs> I'll be an extra so I'll be gorging on food for weeks and weeks and weeks trying to get my body weight back up. Uh, so I'll definitely enjoy it, but there's always going to be that certain sense, that certain feeling of kind of dissatisfaction of, uh, you know, having had this experience and then obviously going back to the same job. There's always going to be that feeling of wanting to do something else mm. and wanting to kind of move forward. So, yeah, definitely it's going to, uh, it's going to, it's going to make you essentially uh, push yourself further in your life in England uh, rather than being kind of happy in a place where you're at. Because I've, I've got a decent job, happy where it is, but you're going to want more. After this experience, you're always going to want more because it's hard to go back, essentially, I think.
So for another kind of day, I've had to go back into shelter very, very early due to the uh, rain coming in earlier and earlier, just due to kind of like us getting deeper into the monsoon season. As you can see, it's not too looking too good outside. This is one thing I never said enough whilst actually filming this was just how impressed I was by James. He was an absolute trooper. I feel like when you're in the trip, you know, the hunger makes you feel, you know, less, you know, you're less enthusiastic and positive, but... What's the noise? What noise? Listen. Do you hear it? What is, what's the noise? Good. It sounds like, like one of my... The charges in my bag. Really? Or is it egg timer or...? No. Not next time. Yeah, legit, what is that noise you think? Mm. Well, I guess I'd have to do that right, soon. Why are you trying to sleep face to face with me? Do you have anything wrong with that? You're obsessed. Yeah, man. You're obsessed. What was this face looking you in the eyes? Mm. Right. I'm trying to get some body warmth, mate. I'm fucking freezing. How cold are you? Quite cold. Are you not cold? Uh, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what cold is anyone? I do. I don't. It's this right now. Your bin bag's gonna help you. It's, it's partly helping me. Does the body fat not help much? I don't know. It's just obviously because I'm not used to cooling me fat then. Okay. Yeah. Cheers then. Because I'm not used to having so little now. This is quite a little to, for me. It's a little for me. I want to say, oh, your body fat gone. Yeah. Maybe you need to eat, eat some more ants, mate. Yeah. If you eat like a thousand ants, that's at least. 100 calories? Yeah. That's bugs bite, mate. Nice. Yeah. Good old bug bites. Mm -hmm. Your stomach grinding a lot now. Yeah. A lot more than it was the other day. Yep. Especially when I start thinking about food. Were there sausages and food? No. Roast dinner. Roast lamb, yeah. Mint. Oh, mango chutney. No, I'm good. Oh, mate. Papa dog. Curry. Oh, mate. Rice. Chili con carne. Burrito. That. Oh, mate. Southern fried chicken. KFC. Oh, mate. McDonald's. Beef burger. Cheese. Cheese and toast. Beef. With like, but with like, it's like bubbling so nicely. You got some ketchup underneath it. Maybe some ketchup chili sauce. And the cheese is bubbling to the perfect amount, but it's still thick and just like... Greasy. What cheese have you gone for? I've gone. I, I prefer just cheddar to be honest, mate. Strong one though. Like mature cheddar. Nothing yeah. too fancy. Real strong mature cheddar. Yeah. That's what I like. So I just don't want cheddar. Cottage cheese. <laughs> Bugs biting. Bugs biting. Maybe we should bang a gong every time we get a bug bite. Bong. You just feel them crawling sometimes. And then a bong. That's what we need to think out really. Yeah, so. Stop them from getting underneath us. I said cottage cheese? Oh, I'm not playing anymore. Why, are you getting too hungry? Yeah. David, uh, the more we talk about it, the more likely we're going to dream about it. Yeah, I don't know whether I want to dream about it. You don't want to dream about food? No, because it could just going to make food me Food dreams are my best dreams. Nah. Mate, Jennifer Lawrence or Food Dream? I'm taking Food Dream every time. Jennifer Lawrence and Food Dream. I don't care. Forget about it. I, Jennifer Lawrence can be inside the Food Dream, feeding me. And I'm like, nah, I feed myself, man. I just eat it all myself. Like, I wouldn't care. You can put, you can put, you can put Scarlett Johansson in there as well. I'm still going straight for those Oreos. I'm going straight for that sausage rolls. How are you going to get like, you know they used to, do they still do four for like three pounds sausage yeah, rolls? Yeah, four for three, yeah. you going to get that? Oh, mate, always do. With a steak, mate. Oh, no, no, I get them all. I get the four for three sausage rolls uh, for like when I'm actually at work. Yeah. Like on the way to work when, I'm, when I've bought it, I'll, I'll eat like the steak bakes and that. Really? Yeah. Like a cheese, cheese and bacon slice, yeah, just try it for, for a boy. Cheese and bacon slice, I'll give yeah. it a go. 
That's not the one where like you can. S it's does it look like does it look like a steak slice? No, it's like a turnover. It's like a turnover. Oh, no, I've never had those actually. Yeah. I've avoided those ones. Why? Is the cheese like melted or is the cheese like? Yeah, cheese. No, but is it like hardened? A little bit, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'll give it. I'll, I'll give it a go. Though. I will give it a go this time. No, does it have to be warm to be nice? Yeah. What if it's not warm? Then ask for a warm one. No, they've got to put one in the oven. Fucking great, because they've got everything in the oven, don't they? Mm. No, it's like if it's out on the show. What's your thoughts on the old sausage uh, bean and cheese melt? Really good. You're a fan of that, yeah? Big, 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 big fan. Massive fan of that. What's your... In ranking order, how would you rank... Um, uh, steak slice. Steak chicken, slice is, always, chicken, is number one. Chicken slice. And cheese and bean melt. Uh, steak slice, cheese and, cheese and bean sausage melt, and then chicken slice. Oh, mate, but chicken slice is nice. No, but it's, it's, it's the cream isn't as good as like gravy, is it? Mm. Gravy is what makes all the best slices. We're looking at noises outside earlier. I don't know. Could be anything, mate. Could be a cheaper car, bro. So that's a mythical, I think, Californian woodlands creature. Mexican creature, is it? Is it Mexican? Oh, yeah. fair. Chupacabra. Mm. Like Bigfoot, isn't it? It's in workaholics at one point, that's why they this border. Thought they killed it. It's in South Park as well. Like, South Park's like Colorado, so far away. Mm-hmm. Your stomach grew out so loud, mate, you scare tigers away. Yeah, man. That's a good thing. Talk about food. No man, I'm getting too too hungry, I'm getting too cold. It's all that food, it's all that food, it's all that food. I like the word association because it takes us so many different routes. No man. Come on man, no, come on, no. Nando's. Oh mate, Nando's, I do love What's, what's your next yeah. thought, Nando's? Eating it. Mm. Oh, no, word association. No, I'm just, just waiting, I know I'm done. I'm, I'm all doing my Nando's. I'm getting my pit, pit and hummus, man. Mm. Mm, with a little drizzle. Man. Oh, yeah. That's going drizzle, in my you mouth. mean Drake? No, drizzle. Oh, yeah. That's going in my mouth, man. Warm pit as well. Mm. Nando's is overrated, bro. No, man, just let me have my moment, man. Okay, you have your moment. Well, okay, man. I'm going to pretend to be the Nando's uh, person behind the till. Is it? Mm, yeah. Yeah, sounds scam. I'm just like, okay, you walk in. Yeah. And they always ask you the same question. Have you been in Nando's before? Fucking of course I've been in okay, Nando's. Okay, let me ask before. let me ask a question. Hey, hey skinny dude, obviously because you've come from uh you've come from the uh, from the jungle, so you're quite skinny. Mm -hmm. You ever been to Nando's before? You look like you've never even had a chicken. You look like you're vegetarian. Get out of my shop. Excuse excuse me, yeah. excuse me, mate. I'm a fucking veteran at this, yeah? So don't ask me if I've been in Nando's, yeah? You swear so much, man. Hey, oh, I'm just working I'm just working my basic job, man. I yeah, need to swear. Yeah. Well, you know, let me just go order. So I go up, order. Right. What are you ordering? Oh, on table number, da da da. Yeah. Right. I want double chicken and pita. Yeah. Yeah. I want that hot. Yeah. I want cheese, p pineapple in that as well. Oh yeah, cheese, pineapple. Mm. Mm. You getting any ham in that? No, you don't, or, don't do ham. Or pork? No, they don't do pork. Man, that doesn't even that good. I'm not a big fan. And then I want peri salted chips on the side. I want coleslaw as well. I yeah, want, some I want, slaw. Yeah, man. I want uh, the pita and hummus for starter. I also want three, three bowls of halloumi. And I want some peronets yeah. mm, pronto. Okay, the wait time for that will be Two days. What, what, what do you do now? Do you pull out a shotgun? I wait. You wait two days? Yeah. Is it that good you wait two days? Mate, I've waited 20 